What's going on, everybody? This is Will Schustrick and Idris Garcia. We are bringing you commentary on the back nine of the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour 2019. We're watching uh, Lori, Temu, and Yale, and Vainu play the back nine at the Frisbee Golf Kiskis in Tampa, Finland. We got some exciting disc golf. The conditions are kind of tough here, cold, rainy, and windy, but we have some really talented golfers tackling a beautiful but difficult course. Uh, yes, we have seen, ah, man, this course has some long par fours, a lot of out of bounds, some difficult stretches. We're gonna see the players throw a lot of really tight lines. Uh, the conditions will come into play, as Idris mentioned, it's raining, it's pretty cold, pretty standard finished weather, uh, but we have some hot players making some long putts and it's gonna be fun to watch them coming down the stretch playing for this Pro Tour Championship. Yeah, and we're going to start on hole 10 uh, after we just talked about a bunch of long par 4s. We're going to start with a short par 3, 249 feet, 76 meters dead straight. Uh, this is one that all these guys really want to get and need to get. Yeah, and uh, talking about the scores real quick, we got Lori at negative 12, we got Yale at negative 9, and Temu and Vino are tied at negative 8. So you can see the weather is... Now the rain is coming down pretty strong and uh, we're on a must get hole. Um, I've said it before, but that is a standard shot for Yale right there. Just dead straight on a rope shot. Yeah, and the first two players are parked. Tamu a little bit on the outside there. So that's gonna be a tester putt for him. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting to watch if Vino, if Vino, Yale, and Temu are gonna make a move as we watch uh, Vino kind of give that a little bit of an ace run right there. Um, Temu oh. missing, ah, man, that that's a birdie that you don't wanna miss coming down the stretch. Yeah, and Temu has struggled with his putt at times during this round, and if you're gonna catch Laurie who is just hot, 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 you gotta make your putts. Yeah, and there's Vino just tossing that one in right there as we see the rain continuing to come down. Look at all the droplets of water off the top of that basket. Yeah, I, I, I can't imagine it's easy to, to grip the disc or feel comfortable with it in your hand. You'll see a couple of different techniques. Uh, Vino during the front nine was kind of leaning over his disc right before he threw just to try and do anything to keep the disc and his hand dry. All right, now we're headed on to hole number 11, which is another par three, right after we talk about how there's long par fours, there's two par threes back to backs, but these are the must get scorable holes, 256 feet, 78 meters, uh, with a dog leg to the left. So you're gonna see a lot of players with a really high fading shot. Um, either, I'm gonna guess they either go mid range, maybe really overstable hybrid type disc. Uh, that looks like what Laurie is going right there, trying to hit the edge and then skip right in, but he got denied by that corner tree. Yeah, there's a lot of guardians on this one. You definitely wanna be in that gap because the rough is kind of interesting to, to try and putt through. Yeah, we mentioned it earlier. You see a lot of players go with uh, with what I call just a jump putt layup, something to where you find uh, a fairly tight gap and you're not really reaching back to try to throw it really hard. You're more or less just jumping through the gap and, and getting your disc to slip and slide all the way up to the basket. As uh, we watch Tamu throw one of his the first sidearms of the round and he actually gets CTP. Yeah, I was curious if he was gonna feel comfortable enough to throw that. He does and is parked. And this is just a great example of the rough on this hole, which is that just really rough. It's very hard to putt through as Vino's just on the edge, putting mm -hmm. through a couple trees right there as that would have been a really nice pickup as we watch Lori lay up for par. Yeah, these players are definitely gonna to wanna to take this birdie, take advantage of Laurie taking the par here just to try and make a move early on in this front nine because once it starts getting to the back, you're, you're essentially starting to play match play and Laurie just needs to stay ahead. Yeah, and great pickup there by Yale. Um, Laurie with the par, Temu with the birdie, that's a great pickup, missing the one before. Um, but Yale is kind of right now the closest and the one that's making the move uh, on Laurie as we head into hole number 12. And here's one of those infamous uh, par fours, very long, 653 feet. So you're gonna watch players really throw some hard, slow turning shots 
Um, and then the second shot gets pretty open, but those white stakes over there to the right are out of bounds. So you're not going to see players turn it over too much. You see them kind of hang it wide with either a forehand or you're going to see Tamu probably take full advantage, hopefully, uh, and rip a nice overstable driver down the fairway. Yeah, we'll see what Yali goes with. And he goes high and it looked like maybe cut roller i don't know what he was trying to do if maybe he just held on to it a little long but he's going to be on the right side rough yeah that is not where you want to be you could actually see his disc come down uh, as Tamu goes with that overstable disc pretty high uh but yala i think was going for a turnover shot and pulled it too early uh but that is not an ideal spot to be making to looking to make a move yeah lori ripping one right down the center of the gap really nice shot there He's going to be a little pinched off. He's going to have to probably throw a sidearm from there. Yeah, it's not too bad. I think we've watched Lori throw a couple sidearms already. Um, as we see Vino just throw one up into the clouds right there, and it looks like he's getting a huge flex. That shot is massive, and I think that tree, uh, he was coming back inbounds anyways, uh, but I do think he landed safe. Yeah, it looked like he landed safe in that open area. None of these players really hit in the middle of the fairway, so they'll all have interesting footing trying to get access to the green. Speaking of interesting footing, that's some interesting shoe choice right there by Yale. <laughs> uh, as we see him go with um, what looks to be most likely a fairway driver, but I think he's flirting with the out of bounds as he needs to get up and down right there uh, to save a stroke as... Laurie's pretty confidently in the middle of the fairway. Yeah, Tamu going high over the top. It looks like he turned his over a little bit much. Yeah, it looks like I don't think Tamu's going to be liking that spot too much. Um, it seems like the whole line of trees over there on the left is uh, is almost just a complete wall of getting to the basket as a. Uh, as Lori gets up there, maybe not all the way to the basket, but he's going to have an easy par with uh, the other players somewhat struggling coming down the fairway. Yeah, and that's a nice play by him, just staying out of trouble. Well, a couple of the other players have found trouble. Vino getting on the green as well. So good job by those players just staying controlled while the others find the rough. Yeah, and Vino can actually make a move as we watch Yale uh, I don't know if that was Yale or Tamu actually from the left hand side. I didn't get a. Uh, so I'm guessing it was Yale because here's Tamu fighting a tree, it seems like. <laughs> it seems like he's fighting the roots on the ground. Uh, but it's going to be interesting to see Vino make a move um, with these other guys somewhat struggling coming down. Um, Tamu just kind of tosses one out there. That's a nice out of him. Yeah, you just need to live to fight another hole at that point. Just get it out, get your bogey and try and make an attack on the next hole. And Yale just tossing it up there. It's been a little bit of a rough hole after the uh, unfortunate drive. And uh, with Lori knocking this in, he can really pick up some strokes right here. That gives it a soft bid. Hanging, leaks out a little bit left on him, but again, an easy par. No shame on this hole. Good Tamu, yeah, great bid from Tamu as he, uh, outside the circle. Here's Vino for birdie to pick one up on the whole card, and he really needed that one. What a great putt right there by Vino. He's going to be picking up some strokes on Tamu, Yale, and Lori, even with a, uh, Lori is taking a tap in par, and he's taking the second best score on the card as Yale takes the double bogey. Unfortunate hole for Yale. He's been playing so controlled so far, and it just look, looks like this hole kind of got away from him both off the tee and on the second shot, just never really found his footing and you'll take a double bogey for it. Yeah, Vino with that birdie puts himself right back into the race as we head into another very tight shot. Uh, hole number 13, 387 feet, 118 meters. And look how tight and straight this hole is. You're gonna see these players throw uh, either mid-range, fairway driver, potentially putter. I mean, there's a, there's a wide variety of, of discs that you could throw just because you're looking for the stability, not necessarily the speed. As uh, we watch Vino just lace this shot. That what a throw. Talk amazing. about perfection right there. Incredible hyzer flip. That is such a touchy shot. That is beautiful to watch. Laurie going with the same shot. 
it needs to flex a little bit and he gets a little help from the tree. That's also an incredible shot. I mean, just a slight hyzer release, really lefty and righty. Um, Tamo trying to make a move, probably trying a little too hard uh, to make that move as he's gonna be hoping to get a par on this. Yeah, he just pulled it pretty hard as Yale goes early and they're both kicked off on that left side, finding a little bit of danger. Yeah, and pretty great recovery shot right there by Tam by Tamu, just to get all the way up towards the basket. Um, Yale's gonna have a tough one here. I'm gonna imagine he's gonna have to pull something fancy. Yeah, it looks like he might have to go high. Nope, he rips it straight through and gets an unfortunate kick, but fortunate to stay in the fairway. Oh wow, and that's a uh, not a not a fortunate roll as uh, y'all. I seem to be pretty close, but it looked like it just hit the bottom of those roots and scooted back. And oh, it's a great run by Lori as he's going to be losing a stroke to Vino as he only has Vino has about a twelve, fifth, maybe a fifteen foot putt at most. Oh that's wow. A that's a great comebacker by Yale. That's a too tough hole stretch for him. Um, I know that there's a lot of moving to happen as Vino taps in that birdie right there with a just a really perfect drive. Yeah, and that's huge for Vino. And as he's gaining confidence, Laurie hopefully isn't losing it. His putts have looked confident and made good bids on the basket. They just haven't gone in. So he just needs to stave off that momentum that Vino's built. All right, guys, once again, thanks to Prodigy Disc for the sponsor of this Pro Tour event. Uh, we headed on to hole number 14, 719 foot par four. Once again, very long par four. We're gonna see players throw a long drive off the tee. Obviously, there's a lot of trouble on this hole, as you can see the pond, about 150 feet or so before the basket. So you're gonna see players hopefully throw a slight hyzer flip or slow turn out of their hand to hit that gap. And then you're gonna to want to have a flex at the very end. Um, it looks like Vino is throwing uh, some type of D2 or D3 off the tee box here. Uh, that's a great rollout. Um, I'm not sure the exact angle towards the basket. Uh, as it seems he's gonna have kind of a, kind of a blind hyzer if he wants to attack. Um, but not a bad shot to be in the middle. I did great to get off the off the tee. Yale doing the same. It looks like he's heading towards the same spot, but doesn't get the rollout that Vino did. Yeah, once again, this is just a great example of the long and troublesome par fours on this disc golf course. Uh, I've heard great things about this course overall just from the difficulty and being 719 feet with two to three angles getting to the basket with out of bounds it's pretty difficult yeah and that was great control there from Tamu. he kind of tried a little hard on the last one he made the adjustment on this one and, and found the fairway yeah and Yale just getting back to what he's used to is just filleting fairways the fairway filler right there just perfectly right in the middle He's got a nice little run up. Um, I think he's gonna have the best chance to attack the basket. Yeah, Mino is out. Looks like he is gonna go with that hyzer. I don't know if he kicked off that tree and finds the out of bounds. Yeah, that is unfortunate. Um, he obviously needs to attack as he's two strokes back. And now, Laurie just needs to get up. He's gonna have a long look. At least he's safe. Um, being safe obviously is First and foremost, right now with a two-stroke lead over Vino. As I don't know where that disc went. I have no idea. I heard it knock a tree, so he's probably in that rough. 
And look at that shot from Yale. What a great comeback shot as he's had two unfortunate holes and he goes into this really difficult hole number 14. And he's looking to have a 25 footer for birdie, it looks like. Tough angle there for Tamu. It looks like he made it far enough up, but it wasn't a great angle to attack the basket from the rough. <laughs> nice kick there. Yeah, he got a couple tip tapping the branches going by, and he's going to have a 20 footer for, for five. Yeah, he'll need to hit that one for sure. Laurie stayed safe and we'll have an easy up and down. Yeah, and here's Laurie. He just needs to be looking for the par right here. Just nice and simple. Put it underneath the basket. Got the branch to slow his disc down, so he's looking about a 10 footer to tap that one in. And here's Yale for the birdie from distance. Oh, it looked so good for most of the way. Yeah, I thought that one was about to found the bottom of the basket. As here's Vino with a long. Mm. Pud, he's going to be looking at, uh, if my math is right, I think that's a, a double bogey. Yeah, and that's a tough break to take after two straight birdies to pick up two strokes. Looks like he's going to drop them right back. And not a bad play from Tamu as he had a, a really difficult second shot uh, kind of stuck in the woods. Um, Yale, not a bad par as he's picking up a stroke on just about everybody on the card. And Larry really just showing you the importance of staying controlled. He's the only one that's bogey free on this back nine. As the leader, that's really smart play. And we head into uh, one of the few par fives out here, 932 feet, 284 meters. Once again, you're going to see the drive, uh, the players rip shots off this tee. They're going to want to get as far as they can, as we just saw the short basket back there on the left. Um, and then they're going to want to get towards the basket, obviously. Uh, but tee shots, very important here. If you're not in the middle, you're pretty much just trying to get out and then throw a nice long shot to attack the basket. Yeah, par fives are always long, but you, you have five shots to get your par. So you, you have the ability to just work your way up the fairway. Yeah, and that's a great shot right there from Laurie, just putting it into the middle. Uh, hopefully he can do that on his next shot. Uh, that's obviously going to be the most important one. In, in my opinion, most important shots on par fives are your second shot. So even if your drive is not fantastic, as we see Yale right there, that's a great kick out. He's actually yeah. going to be able to have a shot from there. But if you can have a good second shot um, on a par five, you, you can actually save the birdie opportunity. And I think Temu probably would have rather been on the other side of the fairway or at least closer to the other side to have a more comfortable shot for a lefty. Yeah, and we're watching Vino throw a fairly uh, straight disc, and that is just not a good kick right there. I mean, it could have either easily filtered through that tree uh, or just had a little bit of a kick out, but it just drops the disc. Yeah, and going big eyes are here, just trying to get back into play. I think everybody's confused on that one. <laughs> Maybe it's parked. I didn't, it could be, but I didn't see it land in the fairway, so he might still be out in the rough. Yeah, and here's Vino with that second shot, like I mentioned, the most important shot on any of these par fives. And he gets way up there on that second shot. So I think he's going to have an opportunity for birdie. Yeah, makes up for the drive big time. Uh, and there's Tamu with the, uh, once again, very important second shot, putting himself in the middle. And since this basket location is a little bit tucked into the right, he's going to have an opportunity to uh, get there for birdie. Another good one here. These guys finding all finding that similar landing zone. Yeah, and here's Tamu with that flex shot. Let's see if he can get it in there. It's looking it looks good. Real nice. That's a great shot right there. Beautiful shot. You could just see it up in the sky before it was getting there, okay. and, and just could tell that it was online. Yale with a tough stance here yeah he's actually going lefty forehand flick i don't know if you oh, caught wow. that or not 
But that was a lefty that forehand is. flick. Uh, I think Yale broke, I'm going to say he broke his arm or his elbow. It could be his wrist. I don't know exactly. Uh, a few years back, and he played left-handed. Wow. I think he played left-handed for over a year. Uh, and learned sidearm and backhand lefty over over in uh, in Tallinn or uh, uh, the Tali course, not Tallinn, but Tali, uh, one of the great courses in Finland. Um, but it just kind of shows the skill that Yale has in terms of uh, throwing the disc. Uh, stuff like that comes in handy in these Finnish woods, man. You're gonna find yourself in some tricky spots, so you gotta have them, have all the tricks. Oh, yeah, and there's the, yeah, there's Laurie. He uh, that was an unfortunate upshot as he had basically a straightforward up and down approach and he just turned over his sidearm too much. I don't know if it's a grip issue. Uh, maybe it was really windy approaching the green. Maybe that's the way that he uses throw sidearm. I'm not sure. Uh, but it was a fairly routine upshot for Laurie and he misses the over 30 put. I think it was outside the circle putt uh, just a little bit too right as we watch Vino and Tamu. Uh, basically tap in for birdies you know it's it's that's a pretty tough one to lose as he had a easy up and down yeah yali takes the par vino taking the birdie to recover from that double so he's going to be back within three and things are still interesting i mean we have three holes left and this one is not easy at 192 meters 630 feet super super tight off the tee box you can get into a lot of trouble. You just need to make sure that you get out into that big, wide open area so that you can attack the green on your second shot. Yeah, we're gonna see a lot of players either go with a forehand out of the gap, maybe some type of very accurate disc. You don't necessarily have to go with a driver. Uh, probably helps, but uh, I'm sure Tambo's licking his lips right now with this long left to right fading gap. Yeah, and unfortunately just catches one of the trees that's towards the middle of the fairway on the left side. Vino going backhand here, and that looks tight too. But he gets the kick. Yeah, that was, uh, it needs to be hugging that tree on the way by, as that is, I think, the perfect position to attack the basket right there. It might not be ideal, but he's at least going to have an opportunity. Way more ideal than where it could have been. And here is Laurie. Oh, and the opposite for Laurie right there, as he looked to have pierce the gap but he hits the very last one but he's not too far off he is in the middle he's going to be able to have a full swing and get all the way up towards the the gap of the basket yeah i mean these guys all have quite a bit of power so laurie could go backhand turnover he will have the option probably to go power sidearm again as well so he's in the middle tamu having to go roller unfortunately being stuck in that gap and fortunately gets out and i just want to make a comment on yali's yali's uh Yale's shot was, I don't think, moved outside of the line whenever he reached back and released. I think it stayed within a foot. As uh, Laurie was looking to try to do some fancy fancy stuff right there, but it just looked like he got out. At least he's in the open. Yeah, what an opportunity for Vino here. As Laurie finding trouble. And he's going to have a putt for birdie. That's a great late fading shot by Vino right there. As we're watching Tamu, um, he's got that long left to right shot. He needs to filter through. Does so for the most part. Looks like there's a little bit of late rough there that he found. He can he can stretch out. It's gonna be quite a look though. Ooh. Oh no. And Lori takes the bad kick to the left. He's gonna needing he's gonna need to uh, get up and down to save Bogey from there as a. Uh, we're watching Yale from his drive throw probably a very similar type shot, just slow fading and then sliding up. He's going to have a long putt. And again, just laces the fairway, center cut, beautifully done. And here's Lori, a very important upshot right here. And there, oh, wow. I don't, I don't know if I like that roll. That is a very unfortunate roll. He finally threw a shot that he was feeling good about hit the line that he wanted after finding trouble all the way up to the to the basket and unfortunately takes a roll there too and the basket almost stopped him but it had a, a decent amount of power as mm. yale is taking that run for birdie as he knows he has to try to make a move and here is vino right now to put some huge pressure 
Wow. wow. As he cans the birdie. What? What is going on? I mean, just pandemonium. And he, Laurie misses the comebacker, and that's not an easy putt. He's going to have those two little trees. There's a drop-off behind the basket. Things are getting crazy. Yeah, and here's Yale. Great putt right there, comebacker. As uh, Tamu's tapping in for the bogey. Laurie probably taking a minute to just calm himself, letting those guys tap out after just being on the fritz. And they're tied. Wow. They're all of a sudden tied. I mean, Laurie had three strokes with three strokes to go. Takes the double bogey and, man. All right, well, we're headed on to hole number 17. The action has started. We are on 17, 351 feet, 107 meters. This is a par three. It's sitting on top of a little uh, little notch, as we'll call it. Um, we're going to see a lot of players either throw putter, mid-range. You have got to land on that, that sec at least the second tier, uh, to be able to putt at this basket. As Vino looks to be throwing, uh, he does catch an early branch. It and he's it. right on the edge. It's not too far away. That's that's right on the edge of being able to run at it and, and not run at it. But he's been on fire around the putting green, so we'll see how, how he attacks this. Yeah, and it looks like Yale just turning his over a little bit much there. I'm a little surprised on that by Yale, as usually he is just straight fire with the straight shots like this. Yeah, he's throwing some beautiful lines like Tame was doing right here. Yeah, that was a great looking shot by Tamu as he stays right on the edge. Uh, he's CTP so far. It's going to be important for Lori to put this one really close. Yeah. Uh, the first time, first mistake he made was last hole after a pretty clean back nine. And what a recovery there. Yeah, that's a great comeback there by Lori as we're getting a little bit of a replay follow flight action right there. Uh, I don't know if he was throwing a putter or mid-range, but this thing, look at it from start to finish. That's barely shape. moved outside of that line. Great shot under pressure right there by Lori. Yeah, and that really makes Vino's decision a lot tougher on whether he should lay up or tack for the birdie because after this, there's only one hole left. Yeah, and we are not privileged to the other scores that are happening out there on the course. I don't know if somebody is just shooting a, a fire round and coming from second or third card. I don't know if Vino's trying to think about that as well. Uh, but he's got this look. And he drills it. What a putt. That is that is amazing putt right there. I mean, he's getting the follow fight on his putt. Give him the line and everything. Give him the line. Oh, no, he didn't. All right. Oh, my gosh. Center left beautifully done that's like something you make up when you're like this is for not necessarily yeah. for the win but that is a huge putt and a huge putt by yale right there that is like wow these these people are really lighting up the putting green right now yeah yale probably uh not fighting for the win anymore but still fighting for positioning against Tamu. so every putt for him is important as they, those two are now tied as well Great putt there by Laurie. He had a little bit of a, of, a, of a lapse on the last hole, but knocks that one in and stays tied. As we're headed into hole number 18, this is what this is what we like to see. This is what champions are made of. This is what champions are made of. It's exciting to watch. I have no idea what happens. Uh, hole number 18, 322 feet, 98 meters. We're going to see, I'm going to guess we're going to see a lot of forehands off the tee box here. Maybe even a slow backhand turnover. There is a hill on the backhand side right there. So you're gonna see some players kind of just blast it into the hill and try to make a putt. It looks like this one's tough to access as well. Just really tight off the tee. Yeah, and Vino gets through a little bit right there and he just has pretty similar putt to the previous hole. It looks to be outside the circle. Yeah, it's another long one. He's got a lot of green on his scorecard on this back nine. He's gonna need one more. Yeah, and there's not much skipping going on out here, as you can obviously hear the rain in the background as Tamu just throws his a little too low. What a play from what? what a shot right there. He lands it at the base of the basket. That is going to put some pressure on Vino to make that longer putt uh, to keep pace. 
And I think that's where the forehand, having that in your arsenal comes in handy is on tight gaps like this under pressure where you just don't have to take your eyes off the gap and are able just to throw it through. Temu just tossing it up there as him and Yale are tied. And this is to beat Temu by a stroke right here. Oh. Uh, he leaves it just a little bit short. Yeah, so it looks like those two are going to finish tied. Vino leaning over his disc, trying to keep it dry. Here's Vino. It seems to be slightly outside the circle and drains it. Nails it. Uh, wow. By his reaction, he knows the score. That is a amazing comeback as we watch him on the first hole of the first round. And here's Laurie with, with a difficult downhill putt. This is not a gimme. With pressure, rain, Boom. he's dead center. Dead these guys, center. These guys know exactly where they're at. You see these deep breaths. There's a lot of players that say, oh, I don't know what the scores are. Uh, these guys know. And look at Vino's back nine. He has one par, one double bogey, and the rest birdies on a very difficult back nine. I mean, even, even Temu right there, he's taken three bogeys, three birdies on the back nine. Yale with two birdies, a double, and a bogey. Uh, this is not a, uh, an easy course here, folks. These guys are shredding it, and we're heading into a sudden death playoff. This was... I had no idea. I, d I don't even know who wins. This is this is incredible to watch. I love it. And and Vino going Heiser flip up here on hole one. And hole one, as Will started to mention earlier, bit Vino hard during the first round. I think he took a quadruple bogey eight to start his tournament, and now he's tied for the lead in sudden death. Yeah, and it looks like a Finnish hurricane has came in out of nowhere as <laughs> as Vino's shot. Uh, Vino and Laurie are not too far away from each other. Even though, even though Laurie got maybe another 80 feet on Vino's shot, Vino is right in the middle and can still attack the basket. Yeah, and he's really gotten these Heiser flips dialed in on these last several holes. He feels, looks super comfortable with them, just throwing straight down the fairway. Yeah, and as we've learned from previous videos, hole one could potentially be the toughest hole on the course, being par four, 791 feet with a lot of out of bounds. As uh, Lori is up there outside the circle looking at a birdie, and Vino with, I'm going to say, a fairly easy up and down, but nothing is easy at this point. Yeah, and he goes wide and gets the break of going through everything. He, he knows he got away with it. I think this hole has owed Vino just a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Lori probably laying up there. Yeah, there's not much that you can do right there as he's 60 to 70 feet going downhill a little bit. He just wants to tap it in and, and head to the next hole. Yeah, and these guys just trying to stay dry. I, I can't imagine how much time they've spent just being wet and cold. Yeah, and Lori just ripping one right into the air on hole number two as we know this is a long right to left shot. Great kick. Beautiful kick. A little bit of, a, of an unfortunate backspin, but he's going to be putting from circle's edge, I think is that's about the distance. And the key here on the backhand is going tighter than wide because you have to go so far left. As you see, Vino kept it a little too wide, and he's going to be left with a long outside the circle putt. Yeah, he wanted that obviously a little bit higher as Lori. This is for the win if he can make this. Yeah, and every look so important. It could mean the win and chain high, just a little left. Here's Vino, just tapping it in. And these guys are about to be these guys are about to be headed to the third sudden death hole. It's incredible. It's so it's so fun to watch just knowing that any single shot could end the tournament after three rounds of just battling hard. Going back to hole 17 where these guys just birdied it. Yeah, and Vino looks to be throwing that glow PA3 as he has it a little too high and his sails too long. Um, that's gonna be a really tough shot. This is an opening for Lori right here, just to base this, put it right by the basket. Yeah, which he had, had just done before heading into the playoff, but uh, pulls it this time uh, with that same disc. Yeah, you can see the uh, 
the rain is really coming down now. Um, as we watch, this is an important upshot. Obviously, all shots right now being important, but he puts that underneath the basket, and that's where you need to be in. Uh, I don't know if Vino's going to be making a run. Doesn't and he's like not. It. He's just tossing it right by the basket and just saying, I'm ready for the next one. Bottom. Yeah, with Laura being so close just underneath the basket, there's so much risk on this hole. Why not just head on over to, I would imagine, 18. And here we are, hole number 18. Uh, we just saw these players throw this hole. We know Laurie goes with the forehand as he parked it earlier, and he hits early. Uh, and here we are again, Vino with the opening. Can he attack the basket and get up there for the birdie? Yeah, and Laurie pulling two straight shots, just probably a little overexcited. The nerves are running high. Vino laces it out of the gap, but catches some branches high. Yeah, I think that branch kept him from being parked, but he's got to look for birdie right there to finish it off. I think he's a little bit further than he was initially. Uh, and Laurie has the same putt. How about that? They have yeah. just about the same putts as they did uh, a couple minutes ago. And Vino for the win. He wants to drain this one. Oh, and he goes just wide. And ordinarily, this is a fairly routine cleanup. But in the rain, the wind, the cold, with this pressure? Nothing. Nothing Still at all. We watched Vino make him. these like he eats them for breakfast. Yeah, and a lot, a lot calmer this time. No, no fist pumps as we got on 17 and 18 before sudden death. These guys are just trying to keep their cool and take some deep breaths. All right, well, we're just going to play the whole course again as we're headed back to hole number one. I don't even need to tell you guys. You know what this hole's all about. And this hole just does not like Vino. It just is says, I don't like your disc flying down this fairway. That is a rough kick. I think there's some, I don't know if that's another playoff or if they thought the tournament was over, but these guys have had to have been out here for a long time. As Laurie throws, once again, the same shot from the first playoff hole as he gets it perfectly in the middle and it puts a lot of pressure on Vino as he needs to get in the middle and has got to get to the basket. And what a risky shot from Vino, not just pitching out, but trying to really bite off a significant chunk because where he landed, there's OB right and left. Oh boy, that is a great, I'm gonna say that's a great kick right yeah. there from Laurie oh, yeah. because it could have gone straight left, which would have been out of bounds uh, and given Vino the opening as Vino needs to get this one close. As he leaves it a little bit wide, look, wow. oh my gosh. Long putt, but just just the fact of that of he almost that made gap. it and yeah. hit the gap. Like what? Looks like Lori's going with that uh, yellow disc again. I have no, I have no idea what that disc is, but he throws it pretty well. Yeah, clearly a trusty straight disc. Both of these guys are gonna have really long putts. Lori's out. Vino was outside the circle to begin with, but Lori even further. Yeah, this is oh, this is easily a forty-five to fifty-foot putt. Is he's gonna need it. Looks good. Oh, oh my, my gosh. <laughs> That's what a butt. I mean, wow. that smile on his face says it all. I love some, some... seeing these guys high five each other, man. I mean, the stakes are so high, but everyone loves watching good disc golf, even if you're playing against the person. Yeah, what a putt right there. Just drains it. Would have went in the basket with no chains. Just a great, great looking putt right there. And this is Vino to keep pace. He's got to drain this right here. He's slightly outside the circle. Oh, and that headwind just raised it up at the last second. And Laurie is going to bring home the title wow. of the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour 2019. What a huge... I could say so many things right now. <laughs> that was an amazing battle. What a huge comeback yeah. from Vino for taking the quad bogey over. on the first hole. And Laurie, what consistent play throughout the whole entire tournament. He's had a little bit of a mishap on 16, but that was about it. I mean, look at his whole his whole yeah. scorecard right there is just so consistent. Uh, that was some great disc golf right there. Both of those guys showing a lot of resiliency in different ways. 
yeah, just long putts, long drives, an amazing disc golf course. I mean, I, I, I might go back and watch this again. Yeah, I think we, we should just hop on a plane now and uh, head on over to Tampere. Well, thanks for watching, guys. Once again, this is Will Schustrick and Idris Garcia, the Prodigy Disc Pro Tour 2019. Shout out to Disc Golf Finland. Shout out to Prodigy Disc. Uh, let's see the finishing results right there as uh, a couple people came back. Jesse Neat, look at that. The guy missed it by a one stroke in wow. the playoff. What a comeback. Wow. That is That tells the tale right there as... This disc golf course is an amazing place to play. It was great to watch it, great to watch these guys play. Uh, yeah, I'm, finishing comments, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you next time. See you guys, stay dry out.